Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar book review. This one is going to be for I Am Katara, the latest little golden book release. Uh, this is the third of these uh, this series after I Am Aang and I Am Zuko. So Katara is number three, and then we do know that I Am Toph is going to be the fourth of these books. Cover has not been revealed yet, but we know it's planned for January 2025. And I also should add here that a, a, a new piece of news that's come out recently in relation to these little golden books is that it seems like the publisher has a plan at some point to release a box set collected kind of uh, set of these books. Uh, no real details other than they plan to release that to sort of coincide with the release of the first Avatar Studios animated movie. The marketing point from them specifically is a little bit out of date. It says to coincide with the fall 2025 release, but we know the movie's not planned for uh, October 2025 anymore. It's currently scheduled for January 2026. So we'll see what the publisher does again. This box set has not been like officially like announced to be coming out yet. It's just they have plans. So just keep that in mind as a general buying decision. Like especially if you don't have any of these books yet. That you might have an opportunity to buy them in a set. Um, in likely a year plus from now. And um, probably they might schedule that for late 2025. Maybe early 2026 depending on how things go. And then also we don't know how many books are going to be collected together. At the very least it should be the four of them. Uh, so I am Ang, Zuko, Katara and Toph. But who knows in the meantime there could also be like an I am Sokka. Uh, and have it be a, a five book box set. That might make more sense. But we have to see what they actually go about announcing. So let's get into talking about this. We know what these are. These are not the most important merchandise releases, but they're nice, cheap um, little books that release throughout the year. And they're a nice source of new art, of course. So uh, they're only like 20 pages long, but they're, they are full color. Like you can see the, the creative team there is that the writing, the adaptation here is by Mei Nakamura. And the illustration, so the art is by Bao Lu. And uh, I definitely like the art of Bao Lu. And um, it's just, it's it's got a nice kind of cartoony, you know, kind of... Uh, appealing to kids art style because ultimately that's what these books are these books are kind of aimed at kind of kids uh, younger audience but um for collectors and hardcore fans we like to see new official art depictions of the stuff that we're familiar with of course and so they are the the nice style of sort of more low-key merch that releases throughout the year so that's uh, the idea here so, um, yeah, as ever, it's one of these things. I'm not going to show you every single page, but the idea is that it basically recaps Katara's story throughout ATLA. It's just the show. It doesn't go into the comics or anything like that. It's just 20 pages, selectively choosing points throughout Katara's story to highlight her story and her character with little bits of writing um, to kind of get across some context. So there's a nice kind of younger Katara Asako with Gran Gran kind of scene. I think we saw some of this in the previews. Um, getting into some of the kind of later, the, the pages after that, you know, you can see here they give a page for Imprisoned, which is nice. It's a Katara focused episode. So it makes sense that they'd have a page focused on that, as well as kind of waterbending scroll here with her and Aang learning waterbending together. And um, interestingly, they cover a bit from book one. There's basically nothing from book two, which I do find to be a little bit weird. Like, I get it. Like, you have her training with Paku. They, they showcase, like, oh, healing, her healing Aang. Then they pretty much, like, cut to, like, okay, here's her in her, like, early book three outfits. Um, uh, her, like, Fire Nation outfit and stuff like that. And that's kind of nice. Um, we get into Hama. Of course, I think people probably what were waiting to see, like, what's going on with this page. Really nicely, I think, portrayed here. Interestingly, the text doesn't mention bloodbending specifically, but more sp specifies the idea of, like, 
broadly speaking that there is water in living things and that's what Hama focused on and she found it to be a cruel use of water bending and it's not worth hurting others no matter how powerful the technique that's basically what they say little bit unfortunate they don't they don't mention blood bending you can sort of tell there are little bits and pieces throughout the book where because it is for kids very much th these books they do avoid bringing up certain topics um so that's kind of interesting painted lady page is actually really nice they show like of course katara as the painted lady but then they they do highlight that she actually met the spirit the painted lady as well which is um quite cool to see um and then it pretty much cuts through towards the ending stuff um interestingly like i am ang there's no real attention given to like katang like the the fact that the like her and um Aang get together at the end um they do show like a scene from like the the final kind of thing but um similar to how i am Aang kind of uh, wraps up they don't all obviously kind of portray the idea that like um there is the relationship that happens now to be fair as we go through like the other books like I think there's one page that includes Mei in I Am Zuko, but it's still not like super focused on um, stuff like that. Um, at least with Zuko, it does mention like love, which is an interesting decision. Maybe it's because these two characters are older than Aang Guitar, they chose to focus on it in that way. Um, just some kind of odd choices perhaps in the adaptation there. Like I wouldn't read too much into it just because of like the type of book that it actually is. Uh, where like it's not introducing any new canon elements it's just art recapping the story for the most part um so yeah that's that's basically i am uh, katara it's um again very you know, the quality i think is very on par with the other books um you can maybe say something about like i mentioned there was no real book two stuff with katara and um, so uh, you know, no, I think the desert gets mentioned in the text, but they don't have a page showing Katara being really strong during the desert, calming Aang down out of the Avatar state, that sort of thing. There's no crossroads of destiny, the really emotional stuff. And I'm wondering, like, is that a little bit too intense for these books to show? And is that why they often will maybe avoid showing certain things in the same way that they didn't really allude to bloodbending all that much and you can sort of see that like okay maybe this book more highlighted the limitations of like what they can and can't do in these books because they are meant to be for like they're aimed at younger kids uh, primarily but still um nice releases and like i said it's it's sort of the the perfect ancillary kind of uh, merchandise book release throughout the year where it's not meant to be an important release but they're nice little extra things to get um and i think as we go forward it's going to be like when like the new content starts to come out and we get sort of the tie-in merch to the new stuff it'll be cool to maybe see more of, of this style of a book for the new stuff i think more than you know we're maybe getting a little bit tired of like, okay, this is the fourth, fifth, sixth book doing a recap of ATLA in a kind of uh, different art style style thing. You know, we want to see maybe something um, different uh, and, and more kind of fancy going forward uh, and just something that feels a little bit more new. Um, which is why, like, I think there is a kind of limited run on what they can do for like, especially ATLA. I'm guessing they'll do they'll do Toph, of course. They'll do maybe Sokka. I'd be surprised if they really did any more characters uh, just with what it is. Maybe they'll go over and do I Am Korra. And that could be a nice thing to do. I think more, more of these publishers do need to step into the Korra space. Because that opens you up to a little bit of a different audience. That is, you know, in a way, desperate, I think, to get some merchandise for Korra, but the releases that we get for Avatar, but we never really tend to see for Korra. And so that's uh, one thing I would like to see them kind of swap over to at some point, is that instead of potentially getting into a repetitive cycle with the Avatar books, use Korra. Um, definitely it w would be my suggestion. But um, yes, I am Katara, it's uh, out right now, um, so if you're interested, um, definitely purchase it if you wish. Um, $6 is the recommended retail price, the, the US retail price, $8 Canadian. 
I, I'm pretty sure it only cost me like five euro fifty or something like that where I ordered it from. And so for what what it is, it's like twenty pages of art for you know five euro. It's it's pretty decent value I think overall. Not important, but you know they they do a good job with type of book that this is so i'm um, gonna leave it there if you have read the book yourself definitely in the comments let me know what your thoughts are but uh, otherwise that has been the video thanks for watching and bye